Oh, and look at this one, look. They're both here, but that one's been hawked. It's got a gaping wound in its throat, look. Oh dear. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to work out where the damage is. Oh, there, look. There, under the crop, under the wing. Okay. Okay, let go. Can't super glue it while it's got seeds in it, can we? It's got an eye on full crop. Okay. Right, so what I'm going to do with that, I'm going to put some, in fact, somebody else is going to glue it. Put the glue on. Matt, do you want to do it? And then I'll push it. I'm really sorry for it. It's ever so good there a lot. It's not even. It smells, doesn't it? Can you smell it? No, that's what's watching out the nose. It smell. I think that's closed up the, the crop. The crop's closed. Okay. There we go, I've just come back from work and look who's sat on top of the loft. That's another one of ours, so we're just one missing now. Oh, you found your way back, well done. <laughs> it's a really great feeling actually when uh, when they rock up. Oh, and look at this one, look. They're both here, but that one's been hawked. It's got a gaping wound in its throat, look. Oh dear. Right, well, we've just uh, done the emergency repair to the pigeon i'm not convinced i've never done that before by the way obviously you could probably tell um, but i'm not convinced it's going to work because i think once the it starts to work its stomach that might that super glue might just like pop open it literally looks like that the wound does so um tomorrow i'm going to try and get a needle and thread and, and try and do like a suture or something if it does pop up pop off so i look what it's like tomorrow if it's dripping wet then it's obviously leaking um but the worry is that the super glue is going to do more damage now but <clears throat> i had to try something because it kept trying to drink and eat and uh, and it was just all falling out so but well, bloody horrible S smelt really bad as well um not not rotten just smell of flesh i guess um so yeah uh we'll, we'll see what happens in the morning and uh if it's worked okay then great if not then i'm gonna to have to try and stitch it and if it's, that doesn't work well then there's nothing more you can do is there really yeah real shame that so dad's just taken them for another five mile toss 5.2 miles i think it is uh, the hens have just gone at 20 past 11. i split them up into hens and cocks just because the cocks were pestering the hens so much um whenever they land that they couldn't even get in through the trap so um i've just split them up for a bit i'm not sure if that's something that you generally do or not but we're giving it a test anyway and we did it yesterday and the hens took about 25 minutes yesterday or day before hens took about 25 minutes to get back the cocks were here straight away um might have even been half an hour for the hens. But anyway, the, the cocks are definitely quicker. Um, but I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing to do. But we've also made a couple of other modifications. They weren't trapping great or landing great because the trees have overgrown quite a lot. So that's next door neighbor's tree, which is overgrown of, on our side quite a lot. Could do with that being lopped back. And then I've also trimmed this um, um, silver birch as well, which is a big pile of branches there, just so they can see through. I've also got some of this mesh, which is what Charlie uses, uh, which I'll stick up at the top. And that's just to try and prevent them from um, landing on top of the loft over time and hopefully use the landing board more. Um, so yeah, we'll see if that makes a difference. I've not done it today, but it's going to be bad weather for the next few days, which is why I wanted to get the toss in today. Um, and over those next few days, I'll, I'll, I'll make these modifications to the loft. I also need to put a pad on the other side of the trap where I can, um, like a wooden box where I can slide the ETS sensor underneath. So. Uh, the landing pad so there's a few jobs to be doing uh, over the next few days all right so been six minutes so far got some blue sky over there hardly any wind compared to what we normally have but this is their third toss at this uh, this point so and it's about as far as i really want to take them um at the moment but let's see if they uh, make it back <sighs> got my christmas mug of tea over there what's that eight minutes record <whistles> they're here they? yeah eight minutes hell. that's better isn't it come on there are the cocks seven minutes Some more rain. Here we go. 
more going over past the pylons. So we might we might get one in a minute or two. Here's one, yep. Straight in. No one, Charlie. No one behind you. Scaffold in you and putting scaffold up over there, making lots of rackets, so I'm just scaring them off. Another one coming, Charlie, behind you. No, that's a wood pigeon. <laughs> yeah, there's another. Is that one behind you? There's one. There's one here. <laughs> One of them did. So there's one just sat on the uh, roof there, not wanting to clock in. Oh, it's starting to rain now. Eight. So um, we're now up to 10 miles uh, training toss. My dad's just taken them, or he's just let them go. We've split them up into two. He's let the first lot go at 23 minutes past. So we took them there yesterday, uh, the first time at 10 miles. And I think the first lot took about 35 minutes to get back. And the second lot were about 15, 20. So um, they, they arrive within a few minutes of each other, actually. <clears throat> you see, we've got a couple of modifications I've done. I put some concrete down now um, for in front of the loft and then I'm going to put some steps here and then do something at the front once I move the forms out way but this is just a lot better so that in the winter I can walk on this and it's not going to be um, you know muddy and whatnot and I've also got these chains on which I'll do a video on this later but I've, I've basically supported the uh, landing board a little bit better and uh, it's worked really well to load up the birds because I've had a couple of problems with them um, trying to catch them so to begin with I just tried to catch them put them in the or tried to tempt them in with a bit of seed and that worked okay for some of them but the other half weren't having it so then I was trying to chase them and I just stressed them out I put the darkness boards up which made it a bit easier to catch them but then um, it was still stressing them out and stressing me out as well to be honest so uh, what I eventually did was um, adapted this the, the, the latch here so that I can put this down, fold that out, and I can put the crate onto there. And I just put a sprinkle a couple of seeds, not many, and the cocks will come rushing out, straight out into the, and um, dead easy to basket, actually, it works a treat. The hens are a little bit more nervous, and uh, it's gonna take a bit more work on them. Some of them will go straight in, uh, some of them won't, but uh, it's definitely a better way of getting them than, uh, than I had been done previously. So, uh, what are we now? They've been up in the air for four minutes. It's 10 miles, so I'll uh, keep an eye out for them. See if they come in. Right, so it's 33 minutes past. <clears throat> Still no sign of them yet. You wouldn't expect it. That'd be 60 miles an hour so far, but it's only their second time at, at 10 miles. So, Interestingly, I've um, the hen that got hawked and we glued back together again. Um, the, the repair seemed to hold really well and I opened the latch the, the next day and uh, a load of the hens jumped out she sat on top of the landing board for a bit and then within five minutes she was out there flying with them so uh, i took her yesterday and um, she was a bit behind the others but made it back seems fine so i've sent her again today just because whenever i let them loft fly she's out there flying with them for an hour so i don't really see any reason not to 
sender. Um, remarkable, really, that that she's uh, flying at all. I'd be laid up in bed for weeks if uh, something like that happened to me. But it's good to see. And she obviously wants to fly. And um, but she was behind yesterday. She was the last bird in, so it, it was a bit difficult for her. Um, hopefully, the second toss she'll know where she's going. So. Come on, pigeons, where are you? Sparrowhawk. There's a sparrowhawk just there, look. There, look. Pigeons spotted it. The pigeons just arrived just at the same time as the sparrowhawk. At least they've seen it. Okay, so I don't know if they're going to come in and land while that's around. I'm not going to, I'm not going to call them down, or will I? Bloody time in that. I don't know if this is too risky or not. I said I'm not going to call them down, and literally two seconds later, I'm calling them down. Okay, so Dad said, let the hens go now. I don't know if they're going to come down, which is going to be a ball eight when the hens come back and we have to split them all up. They've all got to do it, or none of them. Well, when they finally came down, that was pretty damn good, I think. I think uh, they were a little bit nervous because of the sparrowhawk, but actually, uh, probably the best trap so far. I'm, I'm happy with that. Right, so the hens are due next. They're a lot smaller. And you can actually feel the, the weight difference between the hens and the cocks. And the uh, the hens are definitely lighter and smaller and probably an easier target for the, for the sparrowhawk, but it didn't seem too interested in them then, probably because they were already in the air and the sparrowhawk prefers to ambush them, but because it's had them a couple of times. Um, so we've got what was that? Oh, I would time that. See what time? I think it was about two minutes ago, wasn't it? Not bad, no. Um, we've got 19 here so far. I'm pretty sure we've got 20 cocks. Because that one there's wrong as a cock, but I think it was 10, uh, 20 earlier, so one short. But they're um, but they're leaving all the uh, maize there. The hens were sent at 38, so it didn't take them long at all, did it? 20, what time is it? 33, 43, 23. I think that took them 15 minutes. Let's have a look. 15 minutes for the cox to do 10 miles. I don't think that's too bad, really. Right, so that's 10 minutes for the hens. I, I think the hens might be quicker, you know, because they were quicker than the cocks yesterday, and there's bit of a tailwind today so hens aren't back yet did they clear all right the hens i won't let them go at that end of that road you're quite away from the a1 but there's a gap in the trees and if they go through that it's straight onto the motor yeah a1. a1 even yeah well <clears throat> it's been an hour and 15 minutes and we've only had three hens back so far 
we've had the two slowest hens one of the ones that was um hawked previously she came back with another one which is you they, those two are usually the last ones here so i'm not sure what's happened to the main batch i imagine that these two got left behind and have just made their own way back um and then another one has come which is um that arrived about 10 minutes ago so we're still 17 we're still 14 missing so far after now 15 minutes so hopefully they'll come together as a batch but you know this is the longest uh training session we've had so far and well, the cocks were back in what did I say 15 minutes something like that oh better late than never it's only taken them an hour and a half so I think tomorrow or the next time I take them I'll um, I'll let them have a loft fly first because I don't believe that they've look I don't believe that they've taken that long to get back I think they've been just off flying see if we can get them in <laughs> 